Since 2006, Bravo has brought some serious drama to television sets all over the world. But as it turns out, even in chaos, there's order. Just ask the Real Housewives cast. They may appear to have free reign over what they do in front of the cameras, but in reality, even these influential divas have to follow some pretty strict rules if they want to stay on the show. Bravo profits from the cast. Over the years, the Real Housewives cast has used their status as reality stars to plug their personal business ventures. But nothing's really free in Tinseltown. According to their contracts, Bravo has to get a percentage of the money they've earned from promoting their business on screen. The only star who got to bend this rule was Bethany Frankel. She told CNBC, In the first season of Housewives, I made $7,250 for the entire season, but was the only person to put in my contract that anything I ever do, I own. And it's a good thing she did, or she would have had to share her profits when she opened up her official shop, Skinny Girl, an online shop that offers stylish and comfortable clothes with a little extra flair for women of all shapes and sizes. Nothing is off limits. Reality TV shows rely on the cameras capturing everything as it happens, which means the crew can pretty much use the footage any way they want. And the Real Housewives can't do a thing about it because they signed a contract that allows the network to access everything and anything while filming. So absolutely nothing is private, not even their phone conversations. Have you noticed how many of the housewives always put their phone calls on speakerphone when they're on the show? The producers have no use for a one-sided conversation. They want viewers to hear both sides while cast members are on their phones, especially if the convo is related to any drama. In fact, casting director Melissa Stanforth told the New York Post that anyone who wants to dictate what should and shouldn't be included on an episode shouldn't be on reality television. But privacy isn't these rich and powerful women's only concern. Salaries range by person. In the beginning, the Real Housewives franchise started off as a group of privileged housewives living extravagant lives, but the show quickly turned into a cash cow for many of them. Salaries range per person, so not every housewife gets paid the same. New cast members, for example, don't get paid a lot. In fact, a source told Radar Online that a new housewife would kill to make $5,000 per episode. But if a housewife is a ratings magnet and they're pretty much irreplaceable, then their salary will skyrocket. Take Bethany Frank for example. She's one of the OG Real Housewives, and according to The Stir, she was making about $1.5 million after she returned to The Real Housewives of New York City in Season 7. Candy Burris from The Real Housewives of Atlanta was reportedly making around $2 million for a season of the show, according to ET Online. But once they earn their spot as a fan favorite, they could be making around $2.7 million per season, like NeNe Leakes. A source who works with a production team said, Nini is the one viewers watch. She knows that, Bravo knows that, and that's why they gave her a raise. But that doesn't mean they can't get knocked off their high horse. You can get demoted. If there's one thing the Real Housewives have learned over the years is that one day you may be on top of the world and the next day you could be hitting rock bottom. If anyone knows this, it's Vicki Gunvalson. She used to earn about $1.26 million when she was on The Real Housewives of Orange County until she left. But when she came back in season 14, she was demoted to just a friend of the cast. She went from earning her usual salary of $60,000 per episode to just $20,000. So during BravoCon in New York City, Vicky stated that she wouldn't return to the series unless she was offered a full-time role. And Tamara Judge shares her pain. She was demoted to friend status on the show too, and also left. But those that stayed need every penny they earned to stay glam. Cast members pay for their glam team. A glam team is a beauty service that brings all the perks of a salon right to your doorstep, or in this case, your dressing room. And they charge a hefty fee for their versatile beauty services. But Bravo's not picking up the tab for this one. When Erica Jane joined the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, she talked about how she flew a glam team out to all the cast trips, which she paid out of her own pocket. And that's not something the other housewives had ever shared before. So how much does it cost to look like a glamorous reality star diva? Well, according to People, Erica reportedly spends about $40,000 a month on hair, makeup, and wardrobe alone. 
And yet, there's something the network won't allow her or anyone else to do to their hair mid-season. They can't change their hairstyle. Bravo doesn't allow the housewives to change their hairstyles halfway through the season. And there's a good reason for this insane rule. There's a delicate process to making sure there are no continuity errors. Every time a new season premieres, some of the cast members are sporting a new look. That's because they won't get a chance to change up their look once they start recording. Makeup artists have to study the look the housewives had when they filmed the interview episodes and match it exactly as it was, which is difficult to do if the stars change their hairdo throughout the season. Vicki Gumbelson told Glamour, You wear the same outfit all year long. You get three looks total. And for three months, you have to wear the exact same outfit, same hair, same makeup. Cast members must have a blog. Part of the role of being on Real Housewives is to write a recap of each week's episode after it airs. Much like the show's viewers, the cast are often seeing and hearing what the other housewives had said about each other for the very first time when the show airs. That's when hell breaks loose. Some of the women can come off as really friendly, but then they'll go and talk smack about someone behind their backs, especially during the confessional interviews. Since the whole cast isn't always present during certain scenes, the episodes can be real eye-openers. And that's why they're required to have a blog, to write observations about what they saw. Because in some cases, the best drama comes after the episodes air. Cast members can't sue each other. Bravo prefers to keep the drama in front of the cameras instead of a courtroom. In fact, it's in every housewife's contract that they have to settle their beef during the reunion episode. Doesn't matter how pissed off they are, the cast can't sue each other. But of course, that doesn't mean they can't threaten each other with a lawsuit. During the first episode of the season 14 reunion, Tamara Judge and Kelly Dodd from The Real Housewives of Orange County got into an argument over Kelly shading her for being on Groupon. They continued bickering on Twitter, and Tamara threatened to sue Kelly for what she said. And they're not the only housewives threatening to settle their issues in court. Vicki Gunvalson sued Kelly in 2019 for accusing her of being a con woman who engaged in fraud. Unsurprisingly, Vicki ended up dropping the suit eventually. Andy Cohen decides who comes back. Andy Cohen, the talk show host and executive producer of Watch What Happens Live, is also the executive producer of the Real Housewives franchise. So he is the one who decides who stays on the show and who leaves. He explained at the Tribeca TV Festival, it's all about what's best for the group. What's best for the ensemble? How's it going to be different? Do we want to continue this conversation? Do we want to pivot into a new conversation? But one surefire way to make sure you don't end up on the chopping block is to cause lots of drama. Housewives who are too bland and vanilla eventually get the axe. Producer Sean Dash explained, the best characters win out and the best stories win out. People who don't deliver just end up on the cutting room floor. They have to pay for their own trips. If the Real Housewives cast want to take a trip that's not on the show's budget, they'll have to foot the bill themselves. But that's not always the case. Bravo also pays for a lot of their trips, but they usually get sponsors. Alex McCord, who was on The Real Housewives of New York, told Reality Fix, Look at the credits. If you see promotional consideration provided by an airline, a hotel, a cruise ship, a this, a that, that means it was provided by the producers. Now we all know that the ladies love traveling in style, but if the cast wants to upgrade their seats on a plane or their hotel accommodations, they'll have to pay the difference out of their own pocket. During an hour-long interview, Andy Cohen also shared that cast members and producers of the show will often split the bill. And while it's not mandatory for cast members to go on these trips, it can really jeopardize their standing on the show. Unless, of course, they have a really good excuse as to why they can't go. Would you be able to follow all these rules on Real Housewives? Would you ask for more money if you learned that another cast member was earning more than you? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to subscribe to The Taco.